Get ready to relive another signature weekend for the top college hockey program in the country here on this week's edition of North Dakota Hockey Central, your television home for all things UND hockey. I'm Alex Hennert. On today's show, we will get head coach Brad Berry's thoughts as his team closes in on a third consecutive regular season title. We will also help you get to know a freshman defenseman who has found his scoring touch of late. But first, let's reflect with a special four-man senior class on the latest installment of UND and Midco Sports web series, Through These Doors. Western Michigan came to town for senior weekend at the Ralph and North Dakota made sure to send their upperclassmen out with a bang. I'm sorry that you feel that way. Feeney gets it in the Western zone, center out in front, they score! Calder! Hopfield sends in the front, a shot, and a goal by Constantini! Oh, a quick shot, and Driscoll had to stop that one. Wow. I'm sorry that you feel that way. He fired a shot, it was blocked, a slap shot, the goal by Bass. Copfield down the left side for Jammer, Nick to Copfield, he scores! Moves in, shoots, and shot a wide, it came out in front. He caught it on his back. He does, yeah. he's got it on his back, Driscoll. And that's gonna about do it. This improbable season is continuing on. As the final horn blew on a big home sweep of the Broncos, it was time for North Dakota's senior class to take center stage and be recognized. This year was something that I wasn't entirely expecting. I you know, having another year and opportunity to play a fifth season of college hockey, but i um, extremely grateful to uh, have the opportunity for that to, if it's gonna happen, to happen at the University of North Dakota. And, um, you know, obviously there's been lots of ups and downs, but overall I'm really, really, really grateful for this experience and um, to be able to do it at this uh, program and, you know, have these guys around me for this season. It's been a lot of fun. This last year has been a blessing. You know, this program is super first class, professional. It just takes things to a whole nother level. And as close as you can get to the NHL and college and something I've really enjoyed. I remember my very first workout at the Ralph, one-on-one -on -one with Mark Pullman, and he hung with me every step of the way. So I was a little worried that I wasn't gonna be strong enough to play here, but that's just because Mark Pullman's a stud. Just the, the culture that we have here and the fan base and obviously playing games at the Ralph, it's, uh, you know, it doesn't get any better than that. This place is really hard to uh, describe to an outsider. You really have to experience it, whether through a game or as a player, it's, it's even more special. The support you get from the community, the coaching staff, everything is beyond expectations. The first thank you goes to, you know, my family and sticking with me uh, throughout this process because you know, obviously I started my college career a long time ago and not every parent out there would be, you know, supportive of switching colleges and, and leaving and, you know, one let alone three. So obviously wouldn't be where I am without them and obviously uh, extremely grateful for the coaching staff here at North Dakota to um, even give me this opportunity to come in and, and develop myself as a person and a player for another year. So uh, really thankful for that. Thank you to my parents. I know it's been a crazy journey. Uh, I don't think they ever wanted to come watch me play up in freezing cold Grand Forks, North Dakota, but this was a unique year and a unique opportunity. And I thank them for following me every step of the way. I thank the coaching staff for, for giving me the opportunity to play at the University of North Dakota, something I'll cherish the rest of my life. And I want to thank the teammates, the guys on the team uh, that have really brought me into this family and made me feel at home from day one. To have the opportunity to wear an A, a letter, something that's you know, difficult for me to talk about without getting emotional. For them to, to provide that opportunity to me um, really means the world to me. Uh, yeah, obviously growing up in Minnesota, I hate to say it, but I kind of grew up watching the uh, Gophers when I started visiting schools and talking to the coaches. I learned about the culture at North Dakota. Um, when I first came to a game and talked to the coaches, I knew right away that I wanted to play at North Dakota. A while back, I uh, played uh, on a team. Kerry Eads was the head coach, and um, 
One day, you know, he kind of came up to me and he's like, where, where would you uh, like to play college hockey someday? Or, you know, have you thought about that? And I was like, yeah, I'd love to play at North Dakota. I got a call and it was North Dakota and I was ecstatic and, you know, I came and visited the campus and I walked out of here just knew this was my home. Our class was uh, Jacob, Bernard Docker, uh, Jasper Weatherby, Adam Scheel, Jackson Keene, and uh, Johnny Tyconic. Unbelievable guys, uh, had a lot of fun with each other. Everyone would always hang out in mine and Jakey's room, and uh, most of the time we were picking on Jakey. <laughs> you always go to a place and you want to kind of add to the tradition. I haven't yet been able to uh, hang a national championship banner, but we've been able to hang a couple banners, so that's always cool. It's always fun to look back at the memories, the photos, and uh, videos of you know when we won those trophies and you know those teams. I'll never forget. I think I'm just gonna miss most coming to the rink every single day and sitting in the locker room, hanging out with the guys, just kind of joking around. The energy that the Ralph has on game days, I think that's one thing I'm really gonna miss. I obviously want to say thank you to all the teammates that I've had. Thank you to the coaches for uh, pushing me every day and uh, making me a better person and a player every day. Thanks to my uh, family, my mom, dad, sister, um, for getting me here in the first place and then, um, you know, support me uh, for all these years. Thank you to Bubs and all the coaches, Jacks, KG, for giving me the opportunity to play here. Thank you for the fans for always coming to every game, being supportive and creating the energy. And then thank you to my parents. They always have been there throughout me growing up and you know, getting me to practice when I need to and always being so supportive. I think UND just feels like a home. The culture that the program has itself and then obviously all my teammates uh, are, are basically family to me now. I absolutely love UND. And this place has become my home. Great stuff from producer Marty Mueller and the rest of the Through These Doors team. Before the seniors were recognized at the Ralph on Saturday night, they helped drive their team towards a pair of wins over one of the top ranked teams in the nation. Bradbury breaks it all down for us when North Dakota Hockey Central returns. Welcome back to North Dakota Hockey Central. Let's go now to Ralph Engelstad Arena to touch base with UND head coach Brad Berry following a third consecutive sweep for his team. Brad, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks a lot, Alex. It's great to be here. You closed out the home portion of the regular season this past weekend with a pair of impressive wins against number six Western Michigan. Friday's two to one victory especially resembled your contests in Kalamazoo from earlier this year. Only you found a way to make the extra play this time around. Yeah, you know what? We finally got rewarded with the result we wanted. Felt we played a couple of good games up in Western uh, earlier in the year. And, you know, coming back here to the Ralph, you know, we had a little bit of motivation there, knowing that, you know, we did play pretty well, but didn't get the result. And, uh, you know, finally finding a way to win on Friday night was a big deal. And I thought uh, a lot of guys stepped up, you know, uh, undermanned here a little bit, uh, currently here, but a lot of guys stepped up and made huge contributions uh, uh, on both nights. Saturday's 5-2 win was defined by the way your team started as you jumped out to a 3-0 lead in the opening 13 minutes. That's been a common thread over these last three weekends as you've won Friday but came out the hungrier team the next night. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, we, we brought up that, uh, that point on the previous weekend in Duluth when we found a way to win after a Friday win in Duluth, winning on Saturday night and having a hunger. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, looking like the team that lost on Friday night coming out on Saturday and having that same same uh, kind of emphasis of uh, being a tenacious, uh, hard on the forecheck, a team that really wants to close out the weekend. And, you know, our guys did. They, they really made a statement. And especially teams were a big deal this weekend, uh, getting some power play goals and, you know, only giving them one power play uh, goal uh, for the whole weekend and kind of uh, shutting down some of their top scorers was a big deal for us. You never trailed at any point during this series, despite the Broncos throwing everything at you at times, especially in the second and third period of game one. What was the key to keeping one of the top offenses in the country at bay? Well, just trying to keep them to the outside, not giving them a lot of time and space. And it's tough to do because they're very skilled. Ethan Frank, Ronnie Adder, a lot of those players, you know, they can create uh, a lot of uh, headaches for you if you give them some time and space in the offensive zone. I thought our guys did a pretty good job of keeping them to the outside and 
and, uh, and, and, and limiting their offensive opportunities. They did get some good looks, you know, especially on their power play. They, they can move it around and they got some looks, but I thought at the end of the day, you know, Zach Driscoll and, and the penalty killers did a good job of uh, solidifying, uh, you know, that structure and, and make, giving us a chance to win. So at the end of the day, uh, our guys did a good job collectively as a team. You just talked about it. Zach Driscoll and your penalty kill were a big part of that defensive effort. You've been looking for improvement on the PK in this second half. Are those units getting closer to where you want them to be? Yeah, I think so. You know, getting, uh, you know, Zach Driscoll obviously playing the way he is. You know, usually, you're, you know, if your penalty kill is going very well, your, your best penalty killer has to be your goaltender. And Zach's been doing a good job of that. And, you know, the other thing is having Mark Sennon back in our lineup here, too. He's a big part of our penalty kill and get, starting him on the kill with Connor Ford is is a big deal to try to try to get off the right start uh, on on killing a two minute uh, power play. So yeah, just getting those guys uh, back in our lineup and guys that are contributing uh, at a key time. Your victory Saturday was all the more impressive considering you did it without your top two leading scorers, your top D pair, and one of your senior leaders. Should we even be surprised at this point that you keep finding a way? Well, you know what, I just obviously been here a long time as a, as a coach and as a player and, you know, it, very, each team is a little bit different and each team is very special. But, you know, this is a this is a very special group in the fact that they just find ways to, to, to work hard and play for each other and, and find a way to win games. And uh, we got to continue to do that. You know, obviously, we'll hopefully we'll get some player more players back in our lineup as the days and weeks go on. But at the end of the day, whoever's in our lineup, uh, don't skip a beat. Just kind of play to your strength, play, play to what your role is and do your job. And, uh, and guys have been executing at that level. We could single out a number of players in your lineup for their efforts, but I thought Judd Caulfield had a really strong weekend. He set up Matteo Costantini for the game winner on Friday, and then he scored twice on Saturday. How have you seen Judd take his game up a step in the last month? Yeah, for sure. He's he's taken a huge step, and you know, I thought he had a really good start to the beginning of the year, and then kind of hit middle of the road, just kind of hit uh, a plateau a little bit, and nothing bad, but just you know, kind of just kind of take, evening out a little bit, and and now he's kind of uh, trending upward, trending north again here, and and it's just because I think he's playing to what he is. He's a north player. He's he's very tenacious. He's a he's an unbelievable person, hard worker, but he uh, he creates a lot of havoc for opposing defensemen when he. When he uh, four checks and gets finishes checks and gets on gets uh, in in their back pocket a little bit to uh, not only create time and space for him to make plays but also for his line mates. The weekend's highlight came after Saturday's win when the 12,000 plus in attendance got to celebrate the four-man senior class of Mark Sendon, Gavin Hain, Connor Ford, and Zach Driscoll. What can you say about that group, Brad? Very special. Uh, you know, it's a small group. There's four players. You know, sometimes. You, you hope to have maybe six, seven, eight seniors, but you know the way it, it works out. You know Gavin Hain and Mark Sendon came in with seven other freshmen four years ago, and uh, a lot of those guys moved on to sign NHL contracts and deals, and they're the two last guys standing. And I tell you, they're outstanding people, and I'm glad we have them for the full four years. They've been a big part of our leadership group over the last couple of years, and the reason why we've had success. So again, very excited and honored and humbled to have those guys. Uh, be uh, honored uh, on Saturday night. And then you have Zach Driscoll and Connor Ford who came from other programs that, you know, they, they, they feel it now too. They feel very special here as far as part of our culture and we're, we're honored to have them and, uh, and, and grateful to have them in our lineup. Yeah, absolutely. After the events of the weekends, you now need just one win this week in Omaha, either in regulation or OT to lock up the regular season title. The job's not done yet, but you're awfully close. Yeah, for sure, and uh, you know, we, we want to control our own destiny here. I know there was an opportunity on Saturday night, you know, our game was finished, we won the game, and there was an opportunity for Omaha to, to uh, try to close out Denver on a sweep there, and that didn't happen, but at the end of the day, you know, we want to make, rely on our good fortune and, uh, and make sure that we have to be accountable to earn it every day. So now we're going to go into Omaha here, a tough place to play uh, against a, a very good rival, and uh, we're going to have to find a way to win uh, one or both of those games. The Mavericks are still fighting for positioning in the conference tournament. What have you seen from their game since your previous series back in early February? Yeah, you know what, they, uh, again, they're, they're a veteran team. They have a lot of offensive power. Uh, they have a very good power play. Uh, you know, like I said, they're, they're a very veteran team that, uh, you know, they, they play very well in their building. You know, we were in the pod last year there and, you know, they had a very good record in the first half of the season. And then, you know, they won some games down the stretch in, in Baxter Arena here. So again, we know uh, we're going into a, a place that's tough to win, but again, we have, we, we've done that before in the second half and we've got to make sure that, 
you know, we play the way we are right now as far as being accountable to each other and everybody playing within their system and, uh, and their role. Well, it should be a great series as always. Enjoy the familiar confines of Baxter this weekend, Brad. Thanks for the time. Best of luck going for another championship. Yep, thanks, Alex. When North Dakota Hockey Central returns, we get to know one freshman who's been making a name for himself on the blue line of late. A profile of Luke Bast is next. Welcome back. Since 2017, the North Dakota Decor has featured at least one member of the Bast family, starting with Gabe five years ago. With the elder Bass now playing professionally in Finland, it's younger brother Luke who is carrying on the UND family tradition. The pride of Red Deer is the latest to step into our Meet the Freshman spotlight. Hey, I'm Luke Bast. I'm uh, from Red Deer, Alberta, and I'm a defenseman for the University of North Dakota. Not a very big town. I mean, um, you know, it's cold, similar to here, but um, you know, the, the hockey community um, in Red Deer, is, it's, it's very big. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of the, what makes the town of Red Deer run. So, um, you know, like I said, it's, it's a big hockey community and um, you know, it, it was a fun place to grow up in. Well, there's such thing as called bass time. Um, <laughs> it's usually about five to 10 minutes late. Um, obviously, we're, uh, we're a family of six, um, you know, so my parents, growing up, uh, we, they, they, they had to get a lot of people to a, to a lot of different spots, so that was obviously tough on them, and, you know, they did a great job, but I mean, I, I think we're pretty outgoing people, uh, you know, easy to get along with, and, you know, like to have fun. Uh, I'm the youngest of four. It goes uh, Chabelle, Gabe, Mairead, and then myself. Uh, it's fun, um, you know, I've been forgotten a few places, um, whether that be church uh, or, the, or the ice rink. Um, I think, you know, <laughs> being the youngest of four, you kind of get, you kind of get lost, but, uh, and kind of forgot about clearly, but, uh, you know, it's, it's been a lot of fun being the youngest. Uh, it's improved. <laughs> um, I mean, we're, we're, we're pretty close, um, obviously, uh, you know, he's my older brother, um, you know, we, obviously every, every brother, uh, they fight, but, you know, he's, uh, he's taught me a lot, he's been a great mentor for me, um, you know, whether that be on the ice or off the ice, um, you know, he, he's been a great mentor and uh, I can't uh, ask for a better older brother than him. Uh, obviously, his his decision was totally separate from mine, and, and vice versa. Um, obviously, he uh, gave me a bit of insight, and um, you know, taught me about the program and um, all that all that stuff. But I mean, at the end of the day, um, it was kind of up to me, and uh, you know, it was it was a fit for me, and I thought this was the best fit. Um, and I mean, I guess he, he did too. I'm big into golf. I uh, wish I was better at it, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not big into golf. Um, water sports, uh, I enjoy surfing, but uh, you know, my life's pretty simple. Um, golf in the summer, work out, and that's, and that's basically about it. Uh, I've golfed with Portsy and, uh, and Sandy. Um, you know, Sandy wishes he had a better golf game too, um, but... Uh, Reese is actually a really good player. Uh, I've golfed with him a couple times, but uh, I mean, I, like I said, I wish I was better, but you know, it's, it's just fun to get out there with your buddies. Basically anything, really. Um, you put it in front of me, I'll eat it. Um, so to answer that one, I'll just, I'll just say, uh, say everything. Hey, I'm Luke Bast. I'm uh, from Red Deer, Alberta, and I'm a defenseman for the University of North Dakota. After being in and out of the lineup in the first half of the year, Luke has played in every game but one since New Year's and has emerged as an offensive threat with two power play goals in his last four games. 
Bast will look to take his scoring touch with him down I-29 this weekend with the Penrose Cup on the line. We will let you know what he and his teammates need to do to lift the trophy after this. Let's get you up to date on the latest happening as around college hockey, starting with this week's DCUUSCHO.com poll, where North Dakota is now up to number four, their highest ranking of the season after a second consecutive sweep of a top 10 opponents. They are now one of six NCHC teams to be ranked this week as Omaha has returned to the top 20 after a brief two week hiatus. Heading into the final weekend of the regular season, here's what we know. UND, Denver, and Western Michigan have clinched home ice for the NCHC quarterfinals, with the Fighting Hawks and Pioneers locked in to the top two seeds in some order, and Colorado College and Miami set to be either the seven or the eight. Everything else is yet to be determined, making for potential drama at every home site this weekend in the nation's top conference. The series with the most riding on it is in Duluth, as the Bulldogs only need a split to lock up home ice, while the Huskies need four points to overtake UMD and avoid back-to-back -back trips to Amsoil. Elsewhere, Western needs three points against Miami to secure third place. Denver needs a minimum of four points against CC and a bit of help to keep their Penrose hopes alive, while North Dakota requires just two points at Omaha to lock up their third consecutive Penrose Cup. It all comes down to this, number four North Dakota versus number 20 Omaha. Both games at Baxter Arena this weekend begin at 7 p.m. and you can watch both on nchc.tv. That will do it for our time on this edition of North Dakota Hockey Central. Until next week, on behalf of our Midco Sports crew, I'm Alex Seinert. Thank you for watching and enjoy the final push for another Penrose Cup.